In our second part of this fourth module on Expo 2015, we'll look at some of the pavilions and the US pavilion in particular. Now there are uh, three major types of pavilions that can be found at a World's Fairs. Uh, those offered by countries, national pavilions, uh, corporate pavilions and non-governmental organizations, uh, which can be charities or organizations like the United Nations. But most common are the national pavilions. And for major World's Fairs, uh, each country will design its own pavilion. At uh, smaller fairs, often there is a large space that is subdivided and each country will decorate its pavilion, but it will not have any control over the design of the building itself. So many countries do participate in a World's Fair, but there are many low-income countries that find the cost prohibitive. In these cases, the cost of participation is subsidized by the organizer who provides space and assistance so that a country can be present. Often these countries join together in one large pavilion and have small booths or exhibits to show their country. So the expo itself is a platform to make statements by the organizers, but also each pavilion is a platform for a country to promote its industries, its businesses, and to reach out to the public. One way that the public will notice your pavilion is through a dramatic design. And this is a case of architecture being used to make a statement about a country. In Milan, many countries use natural materials to serve the theme of sustainability. So the buildings themselves were statements about how materials could be recycled, reused, or made from renewable materials as a building material. Inside, pavilions often showcase their products, uh, including the construction materials themselves, the furniture they use, the design, and also often have restaurants and shops to sell products from their country. Countries take different approaches. Uh, some develop quite elaborate themes around the expo theme, other countries will recognize or make passing reference to the theme, but not really engage the theme the organizers suggested. And other pavilions will not really reference it at all. And often you will find pavilions that will be there to boost tourism or not really reference the theme at all, but be there to show what the country is about, but not necessarily in terms of the overall expo theme. Once inside, having attracted you through a, a positive design or reputation, a countries try to compete for a, a positive visitor experience. This is through the use of dramatic design, video effects, interactive exhibits, and unique displays. Uh, in the past, some countries would offer theme park-like like rides, uh, chairlifts or experiences that involve uh, multiple senses. But this was far less evident at Expo 2015 than at past World's Fairs. One of the problems of visiting a World's Fair is the number of people who go. And often, the line for a popular pavilion can be several hours long. Uh, or it can move quickly depending upon the design of the pavilion and the attention it's receiving. Uh, some countries uh, have lines that provide information as you move towards the entrance or who have hosts who are working along the line talking to people, uh, talking about their experiences and the country's pavilion. Some pavilions have a, a continuous design where you walk in and move at your own pace through a, a number of displays and exhibits. Um, and this process uh, allows many people to move through as you can skip those items you're not interested in and focus for a longer time on those that do interest you. But there are also pavilions that offer a film or interactive experience and these pulse people through in groups. 
And in this cases, the flow of people through the pavilion is limited by the capacity of the film or experience. Usually when you exit a pavilion, there will be a, a shop or retailing of expo souvenirs or products that the country has designed or characteristic souvenirs that are known to be part of the country. Some offer restaurants and bars as part of the pavilion as they offer a taste of, of culture and also generate revenue for the cost of appearing at expo. In the following slides, we will visit some of the Expo pavilions so you get a sense of their design. One common element at Expo 2015 was the use of natural materials. There was frequent use of different forms of uh, processed wood, and there was also frequent use of plant material as decoration design or in the form of a green roof or green wall that offers insulating capacity. Countries seek to be easily recognized with distinctive designs. Kazakhstan was a significant presence because it is the host of Expo 2017 in Astana. Usually bidding for an expo means that you have to be seen to be a participant. And so countries participate in expos in part to provide a foundation should they wish to be a host in the future. The pavilion for Monaco showed the use of recycled cargo containers as a distinctive design and way to show that the recycling of materials can offer construction and housing possibilities. Uh, Ecuador featured a, a textile covered structure uh, with color and traditional designs as a way to attract the attention of visitors. The China Pavilion used a distinctive processed bamboo covering to shade and cover the pavilion, and it was also set in a field of flowers that made a very dramatic entranceway to the pavilion. Uh, the Malaysian Pavilion, again using um, repurposed materials and using renewable resources. The Israel Pavilion was one of several that showed uh, farming on walls or roofs uh, to show a way to grow food in a condition that normally would not be able to grow food. The Russian and Estonian Pavilions, again illustrating the, the use of wooden materials and dramatic designs to catch the attention of people as they walked along the, the main boulevard of Expo 2015. The French Pavilion, uh, made of renewable materials, is in fact a section of the Alps, inverted. So the design, which looks abstract at first, is in fact the recreation of some of the French Alps, uh, inverted and turned into an architectural piece. In addition to pavilions, there are often mobile displays that reference the theme of the fair that capture attention uh, in different parts of the grounds during the day. One popular element uh, of the Brazil pavilion was in fact its trampoline-like flooring. It turned out to be a very popular feature that attracted many people who wanted to experience this unusual floor structure. Now to talk about the U.S. Pavilion. Uh, after Expo 92 in Seville, the United States government decided that it would no longer use public funds to support a pavilion at a World's Fair. So this means that U.S. pavilions need to secure private donations in order to operate at an expo. Generally this means that uh, a U.S. pavilion is possible although financial support could not be raised to allow the U.S. to participate at Expo 2000 in Hanover, Germany, or at Expo 2008 in Zaragoza in Spain. The U.S. Pavilion at Milan Expo takes the theme of American Food 2.0. 
The displays are on food history and culture and agricultural innovation. A popular feature is the vertical farm that is one wall of the pavilion. Also associated with the US pavilion, there are food trucks serving regional American food and a restaurant in central Milan on the central square. So some images now of, of the US pavilion. This is the entranceway to the pavilion uh, right off the Decumanus. There were frequently hosts for the pavilion that will greet you as you enter the pavilion. This is common for most countries. In the case of the United States, the hosts are all U.S. university students who are volunteering as interns at the U.S. pavilion for part of the summer. As you enter the pavilion, you will walk on wood that has been salvaged from the boardwalk of Coney Island that was devastated by a hurricane. This is a way to illustrate the reuse of valuable materials in new construction. As you rise the stairs to the US Pavilion, you enter a series of displays about food in American culture. These displays are interactive, and as you move through these displays, you then enter a, a s interior space with a series of themes around American food styles. The vertical farm gets a great deal of attention. It's a very dramatic element of the pavilion and offers a, a green soft exterior for visitors. The panels are all growing food like strawberries or lettuces or herbs and each panel moves to follow the sunshine. In this case, you can see that the panels are angled to catch the sun, and as the sun moves, the panels also move to maximize growing time. So when we see national pavilions at a World's Fair, we see them as expressions of, of culture and identity, and also aspirations, showing what the future of a country holds in store. The designs at Expo 2015 were noticeable through their innovative use of renewable materials, their energy efficiency, and the use of plant material for both insulation and as a demonstration of future agriculture possibilities. At the end of an expo, all the pavilions must be removed and the grounds must find a new use. So in our next module next week, we will look at legacy we will look at what is left after a fair ends and how to make good use of the fairgrounds and infrastructure that a city creates for a world's fair.